Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Thomas Waltz. Hello, everyone. Uh, what an exciting panel to look at the intersection of fine arts and city making. Um, you know, it was a, a roaring debate in the 19th century whether uh, landscape architecture would be included among the fine arts, and it was determined unanimously that it would be a minor art. So I am here to stand up for the minor arts today and talk about um, landscape architecture. Could I go back one slide, please? Um, I uh, uh, have a firm called Nelson Bird Waltz Landscape Architects, and we have the tremendous honor to be designing um, all of the streetscape and public spaces of the Hudson Yards, uh, 28 acres of this incredible development on the east side of Manhattan. Uh, you're looking at the beginnings of the public space coming into shape and an overlay of the public space for the eastern yards over the active train lines. I'm not actually here to talk about Hudson Yards because everywhere I go, everyone wants to hear about Hudson Yards. But when Mary Rowe kindly called and said, I'd love for you to present at the summit a smart talk, she said, you get the five minutes to plant a seed. And so I thought, I want to plant a different seed. I would love to eliminate these terms from our urban vocabulary. I would like for us not to use the word open space, green space, or vacant land. These are pieces of earth with stories. Often they have very powerful stories. We are lucky to live in a place where um, pre-Western settlement happened for a thousand years. Uh, cultivation of land, settlement patterns. We have been occupying this terrain for a very long time. And I feel like with the proper amount of research, Landscape architecture is the right interpreter for listening to these stories and making these quiet voices visible once again. So an example is, I think, the tiniest project at Nelson Bird Waltz, but an extremely important one, is the Brooklyn Navy Yard Hospital Cemetery Memorial Landscape. Um, the um, Brooklyn Greenway Initiative is a 14-mile uh, bike and walk uh, lane through Brooklyn, and this will be one of the stops along the way. The site that is not mown <laughs> um, slammed against the BQE, and you see the historic hospital of the Brooklyn Naval Yards was uh, gifted to the Brooklyn Greenway Initiative, led by Milton Purrier, an extraordinary uh, visionary and citizen, who then hired Nelson Bird Waltz with Marvel Architects to re-envision this space as a memorial landscape and a respite along the 14 miles of Brooklyn Greenway. Our first step at Nelson Bird Waltz is to look deep, deep into the cultural history of a piece of land before we uh, begin to make an alteration. So we started looking, follow the red dot. You'll see that this particular site was at once a, a, a working farm. There are indications of orchards and field crops. Uh, later on, you can see the red dot as it became built up around it and the, uh, the, the port started to flourish. You can see that even in later day, it was still an open farm of working land. And when you think about the patterns of working land, there are rows, fields, plots, grids of orchard. Um, this is the site today, overrun with invasive plants, non-native plants, um, a, a truly derelict uh, piece of land, that the stories of which have been forgotten. This functioned after a farm, it functioned as a working cemetery for 100 years, conveniently located behind the hospital. I don't know if that um, <laughs> extols the virtues of the medical staff, but I'm sure they did their best. Um, <clears throat> so hundreds of, hundreds of bodies are interred uh, here. Uh, some of whom there is no record. Uh, in some cases, it, it was perhaps a potter's field. Uh, there were some interesting celebrities over the years, uh, from 1810 to 1920, that it served as a hospital. In the 60s, the bodies were exhumed, and the Navy used it as sports fields. So uh, once again, a new use of this land. But a finger maybe popped up at some point uh, during a football game. I'm not sure exactly what bone it was, but there was the realization that perhaps this was still sacred land in a way that had not been thoroughly um, purged. So as we uh, listened to these stories and we thought, what, what is an appropriate memorial that remembers the early roots of agriculture in New York City? 
very important, these early settlers feeding themselves in this rocky, rocky land. Um, what would be the positive radiating influence of this memorial? So the green right at the number of two uh, is uh, the uh, Brooklyn Naval Yard Cemetery. And we started to map the kitchen gardens and community gardens that were within a two mile radius. In an urban environment, these gardens depend on pollinators for the success of their fruits and vegetables. So we thought, what better memorial to the names we know and the names we do not, what better memorial than a magnet of life, the most fecund living place we could imagine. So the memorial landscape is to plant warm season grass meadows full of wildflowers to draw and pull in all of the life of bats, hummingbirds, moths, and honeybees that we possibly could. The work was made possible by a grant from the TKF Foundation, who is uh, looking at the effect of sacred places and sacred spaces in urban landscape and among urban populations. So we're actually doing studies about the well-being of people that engage here. Uh, we're also partnered with the Green School, uh, building a nursery, propagating plants and seeds of native plants from the site. The kids have been coming to pot plants, and as we move forward into construction, um, you will be able to watch this flourish. This is the design plan. We, we gravitated to geometries that would recall the old road through the site, the actual proportion of the buried body. Um, we were inspired by Fred Sandback and his art of these frames that perhaps are lit at night that evoke this geometry, planting very rigorously and geometrically the native perennials that will be most effective to attract pollinators. But then realizing nature needs to take its lovely course, we'll recall this geometry, those of us who see it planted for a number of years, but over time, those plants will spread and develop their own beautiful tapestry. But the geometry will be registered by these uh, small steel boxes. A series of mooring blocks remembering the port aspect of this property, and then a small sacred grove of cherries that will recall the days of the orchard. Um, this, this geometry, uh, looking to the land for geometry so that we're not just inventing a pattern that we're laying on the ground, it's, we're also not recreating any one point in time. We're taking inspiration from those forms. Here you can see the perennials have migrated long beyond their geometry, and you can see the sinuous boardwalk that's being detailed by Marvel and Associates um, right now. So this quick Photoshop rendering, you're seeing the way it would be planted at the beginning and that over time, this tapestry would form, revealing the, the, the um, micronutrients of soils, different soil conditions, uh, patches of, of water. Um, this is the planting plan. You can see the amphitheater space, the sacred grove, and this respite along your way through the Brooklyn Greenway. Uh, these are the details uh, we uh, have chosen to not excavate the ground. Warm season grass meadow is installed by scraping away what is there, not tilling or opening the soil, but rather pressing seeds into the surface of the soil. So it was uh, a way to honor the earth, honor the ground, tell its story without actually rupturing the surface of the soil. So the boardwalk sits on these large mattresses of stone and gabions, and the wood structure of repurposed uh, uh, boardwalk is uh, forming the perimeter path through the site. So this rendering uh, shows on a summer day the amphitheater in the distance, the warm season grass meadows, the um, eagle scale butterflies that will be attracted here. <laughs> and, and, lots of, and lots of people who become black and white when they enter the uh, garden. <laughs> You're also seeing the memorial grove of cherries and the boardwalk and the mooring stones that, you know, I believe kids need a little danger, don't tell anyone in codes that, but the stepping stones, the mooring blocks to walk out into this immersive sea of native grasses. You don't really get this landscape in New York. And so it's, it's becoming a layered place of telling stories. And this is a winter view because we want to remind people of the pods and berries that will form on these plants and that it's of equal enjoyment year round. Why do we care? Why do we do this? Why do we tell these stories? We tell these stories through the landscape to touch people's hearts and build a relationship of understanding and knowledge of all the layers that come before. And that is important, I believe, because that's how we build the next generation of great stewards of our urban landscapes. Thank you.